Hey guys, this is Adam with Action Esports, and today we are speaking with Note of the Boston Uprising. Note, how you doing today after yet another win on your team's amazing streak? I'm doing pretty good right now. I still have a little bit of a cold, but otherwise I'm doing pretty well. So Uprising's last two opponents for the stage are uh, both LA teams, both of which are getting better, both of which have taken down similarly difficult opponents as you guys. What are your thoughts going into next week, and are we going to see a perfect stage three for Boston? I can't say for sure yet. I think that both of the LA teams are looking really strong right now. Both of them have got extraordinary players, and I think next week's matches are going to be extremely close, and I don't think it'll be a blowout for either way. Today, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about your team's recent level of success. At the beginning of Stage 1, Boston was in the middle of the pack. Uh, now you're kind of in the top of the standings, you're undefeated for Stage 3. What sparked such a dynamic change for you guys? I can't say it was really a single thing. It wasn't like a, a moment where everything just like clicked and everyone's like, oh, that's what we were supposed to do. But it was more of just like slow, gradual change. Our team kept improving, our players kept improving, our communication kept improving, and everything just kept slowly getting better. And I think some teams somewhat stalled a little bit with their improvement. So I think that just kind of gave them an advantage, at least for Sage 3, at least going in now. Unlike other teams, your roster has remained largely untouched, yet your team shows some of the best improvement in the league. How has your roster consistency affected your performance, and what, if any, advantage does that give your team? Um, I think having consistent players, like for a starting roster at least, does give a lot of advantages regarding communication. Specific jobs can be assigned. Um, you don't really have any like issues with just like a player being subbed out and then suddenly they're just missing a whole bunch of comms or like something they don't usually do is happening like it just gives like a baseline level of consistency that everybody can work off of so you know when you do something this is going to be the result like it's never going to change between players um i think that that also just means that our coaches can definitely just work their hardest with those few people to kind of get them working i definitely think that subs are a good idea to have and definitely to keep them playing to keep them in shape because you will need subs you can't avoid it things are going to happen so yeah it just it seems a consistency has just been working best for us do you also feel like this consistency has added at all to uh, your coach's ability to kind of fine tune and uh, pick out like specific problems to kind of work on with players yeah, I think that Krusty's very good at just like coaching out singular players and just like getting them to work well as a team. So with that individual coaching coming together, we just have a bunch of people who just want to work as a team. So talk to me a little bit about the uh, week two changes. We saw mistakes come into the starting lineup and uh, it was kind of an interesting transitional period. You guys were up against some of your toughest opponents yet. How did you build that synergy with mistakes so quickly and get it ready to start with you guys? Um, just gonna use like the Patriots reference of the uh, what is it next next man up or something um, is that we already had a good core to work around we never really was working around like that star player um, it was just plug and play everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing a lot of just like focused coaching on mistakes for that few days that we had practicing and we're the same team as ever what would you say that the addition of mistakes to the starting lineup brings or adds to the team I think it brings a very, very, very smart individual. All the plays he makes are just really intelligent. So that just adds another level of complexity to the plays that we can make. Um, he also brings a very, very good Sombra, probably the best Sombra in the league right now. So that definitely can help us on a lot of maps as well. When Mistakes first joined your starting lineup, you guys were going into your toughest two weeks of the stage, facing off against all three Korean rosters. Where was your head at going into those weeks with a new DPS in tow? I did my best to keep my head up. I can't say the same for everybody else on the team. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know what they're going through. Um, but I know that everybody just tried their best. They didn't let it slow them down. They knew that the thing that mattered more than anything else was just to play and to win. So they just went down to it. Considering how stacked things seem to be against you going into those two weeks, were there any kind of special preparations or strats, especially considering the DPS situation? I mean, there were, of course, a few, but like, I'd prefer to keep them a secret even now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there, were, there was a lot of preparation to specifically the Korean themes. So yeah. After that first win against New York, how were you guys feeling? I mean, they were the top team of the league. And uh, where was your confidence level going into next week against London and Seoul? Definitely shot up a lot. I think we definitely felt like our play had substantially gone up, but I think we also realized that NYXL wasn't playing their best during our match. So we didn't let it get to our heads. We still just bunkered down, focused on the next matches because I don't know if we, I don't think if we 
the thing that we kind of carried over with the ego that we, you know, just beat the best team, you know, we probably would have just gotten sweeped by London instead of reverse sweeping them. We definitely tried to stay as humble as we could. Most people kind of consider the, the Korean roster as the biggest hurdle uh, for any team, but we've also seen the level of competitiveness rise throughout all of the Western teams. Who would you say, now that you've kind of leapt that first hurdle, is your biggest challenge now as a team? Biggest challenge now will probably just be the two LA teams that are coming up next week. I think if we can finish the stage out with a perfect record, I don't really care that much about playoffs, honestly. I'd obviously like to do well in them, but at this point, what matters more is the end of season playoffs, not the stage playoffs. So I think definitely getting those two points, kind of making sure that we, I guess, I think by that time we would have gone through almost every team. Um, so that would be like a, a really good baseline for us, but a really good hurdle, I guess, to use the same words you did, to jump over. It's just ha finally having to beaten like every team in the league and just being able to go through the next stage with that confidence, that knowledge, um, I think we'd be able to carry it pretty easily to uh, season stage finals. This stage, we've seen some of the tightest and most intelligent play yet from Boston Uprising. Uh, but personally, what would you say is something you'd still like to work on uh, with your own play and some of your goals going forward? I think for my own play, I feel like a lot of the times when I'm playing against slower comps, I'm kind of caught out of place a lot. Um, things like Junkrat and McCree, I'm often, I kind of struggle playing against them, but I think that with some coaching here, I've, <laughs> I've been getting a lot of coaching for that, um, I can work toward improving that a lot as well. Since stage two, teams have been recruiting hard, trying to find the new face for their team that would fix their, their gameplay problems. You guys stuck to your guns with your original roster and succeeded greatly with almost, uh, hopefully, a perfect stage uh, coming up here shortly in the next week. What kind of message does that send to the rest of the league, and where do you think these recruitment behaviors will be going forward? I can't really say what the other teams are going to do. I don't really know. Um, I think that the reason why we didn't need mid-stage pickups is because our pickups were done so well at the start. It wasn't our, our pickups weren't really focused on previous results, it wasn't focused on how big of a stream you had, it was just quite literally how coachable were you and how much potential did the coaches see in you. So having that instead of just like going by names and reputations and stuff definitely gave us a big advantage going forward. So a lot of the other teams are now trying to look for what we looked for at the start, I think. So a lot of pickups definitely be more of those like smaller names trying to find like the next you know good play we heard a lot of talk at the uh, boston press conference about how your team was constructed to kind of grow over the years and continue developing as a team clearly we've seen you guys grow and develop and get stronger just within this one season where do you think your guys skill ceiling is and have you even reached half your potential yet as a, as a team i'm gonna be honest i have no idea where our potential is i think it is extremely high though and I think right now we're doing good, but we're still having the same problems that we've had for a long time. We just got to keep fixing them, keep getting down all the fundamentals. And once we have those down, we can work on more advanced tactics. And I think our end goal is definitely number one. I think we're very close right now. We just have to consistently keep beating the teams that we're beating right now. No, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Congratulations once again, and good luck next week against both LA teams. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it as it really helps us out a lot. Otherwise, to stay up to date with all of our content, be sure to subscribe or hit that bell for notifications.